and, and the ethic ethics will be on both sides, isn't it? Then that is the one who wants to confront, you know, what is the, the thing that drives them ethically? And then the one that needs to be confronted, you know, what is the ethic that drives them? I thought uh, a little bit about uh, Paul and Peter. Um, uh, when Peter is in the setting where there are no Gentiles, no Jews, you know, it, you know so he's, he's fellowshipping with the Gentiles. Then Paul comes in, and then the Jews come in, and then Peter withdraws from the Gentiles. So Paul and Peter generally are equals. So Paul confronts him, says this, this isn't right. Um, and then I, there's no record that of what happens later, but Peter isn't thrown out. So there's a sense in which uh, Paul sees an ethical dilemma here, that, that uh, Peter has violated uh, a tenet of the faith, and so Paul confronts him. Yes. It appears that Peter receives that, com- you know, that uh, confrontation. Um, and I think it's Paul looking at it, this is for the sake of the gospel. This is for the integrity of, of, uh, of those who minister, and that we cannot be one way one time and another way another time. And uh, later on, Peter says, you know, it calls Paul brother. You know, Paul, you know, Paul, our brother, says some things that are hard to to uh, to hear. So uh, I just think sometimes, as an ethical person. Sometimes it's a fellow brother or sister that to confront is to say, uh, here's what I'm experiencing, and uh, do we want to give that impression and see, then let's, let's work on how we might uh, not give that impression. How can we deal with this? Um, to deal with what do, you, do you think that that way of approaching works. I mean, he's, your reference to Peter and Paul, they were peers, they were colleagues. Right. What if it is my lead pastor? What if it is a, someone that could supervise you down the road? You know, do you, for the sake of the gospel, do we really risk that caring, com, caring you know, approach to someone? Well, I think the answer to that would be yes, but... <laughs> uh, I, I, I think if I found myself in, in the role of an associate and was concerned about some things that I'd either observed or heard about a uh, senior minister, uh, I'd be very careful, would want to be respectful of the, the role and the boundary, but at the same time would, would double-check some things. Uh, maybe I would consult with uh, someone that I knew in another large mm-hmm. congregation that might have a senior minister or that I... I had a relationship with them, I mean, use the connection uh, to my advantage and, and consult with them. It's like I've got a situation. Uh, what would you, how, what would be the best way to approach you? I mean, I, I think there are ways to work within the, the system uh, that might be effective or to say I'm concerned about so and so. I really don't know what to do here. I don't know if there's any truth to it, but I'm fearful that if I don't do this correctly or with some help, that it could blow up in my face. Uh, and therefore, don't work in isolation. That exactly. That's exactly what's running through my mind. Is we can't. We, we need the connections with yes. colleagues mm-hmm. that we can trust and that we can ask those hard questions of mm-hmm. and share with. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I would hope that if I'm consulting with someone that quote could be my supervisor or my DS down the road, that they would uh, be gracious with me and merciful <laughs> <laughs> as time passes. Mm-hmm.